I like, I don't know, I, I don't know what, what side I'm siding for. I, I just don't, not very convinced. Uh, I'm not very convinced by the Wraith King pick, if I'm honest with you. I, I like it against the Luna, though. I think the Core to Core is good, but I found the Phoenix Rabbit. Like, Phoenix Tide is so strong here. How, how are you gonna break the egg? Lina has to do it, essentially, but Lina is also a bit at the mercy of uh, getting ganked and destroyed here. You can just run towards her with a hide. Ravager point blank rain. You have the Viper as well to deal with her. If you go for the Dragonlance build, Viper can hit her far. Prepare for battle. I am siding slightly with Quinn. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from here on this one as well. Everything, it, it, it feels like we, we saw a lot of them early in the patch, and um, we, we've kind of gone on over to a couple well, I mean, of other cores. The hero's good, don't get me wrong. I'm not thinking against Wraith King as a hero. And I think this is the... Like I was mentioning with Ancient Apparition for a reason. It's a good combo. Wait. Uh, okay, into the high ground. There's a massive tail here. Wow. Skater, your smoke gun revealed is what? First blood, of course, for Quinn. Ah. They even give it to Quinn. They tip Skitter. I mean, one thing I got to commend him for is that is uh, one courageous Wraith King. <laughs> I, I feel like they were like... is a mental state, my friend. Not 30 a... <laughs> seconds to battle. They definitely weren't expecting all five heroes to be there by the looks of it. That was just like a full confidence move. It was a full YOLO. That was that was the equivalent of, of a Rush B strategy. Uh, as, I think as, as close as I've seen it in, in Dota 2. That was divide, That's divide, true. Rush B. Okay, we smoked. See, we're, we're through the smoke and everyone just gets blasted by one man holding it again uh, on B platform. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, first time I've seen... Well, we see it every now and then, but of course, Tundra, they just kind of shake this one off right away. They, they can't afford to let that one linger on the mine in an all-important game number three. LOA now looks like he'll be killed off. It's cold feet. Will proc kill goes on over to Fata. So some small recompense there, but of course, Quinn getting the first blood bonus. And uh, even, of course, the mental warfare game starting early on with those tips <laughs> onto Skidder. Well, at least they evened this out, but the advantage here, of course, on Quinn, that first blood is going to help him a uh, considerable amount in this lane. And he's going to go for the build that we've seen Limp do as well. That crosses kid level one to just outlast it, whatever it is on the enemy side, and prevent them from harassing you too. I like this very much by... Um, I like this very much by Quinn. I mean, he is... I think reluctantly, but he is a Viper player. He does not like playing, as he's told us in an interview. Viper's yeah, gotta stop spitting were the words he said, but yep. he does like he does like the hero or he does not play the hero well. I'm hoping that he goes, uh, you spoke of Limp earlier, and I'll give him a bit more praise as well as uh, quote a Reddit comments that was actually a pretty good one. Because um, a lot of people, when they play the Viper, not so much on the professional scene, um, they, they think of him as like this early game no monster. Way, and that's no definitely way, true no when you go for like the regular DOTs build. But, but that's not how you really want to be playing it. You The comment, you know, wisely showed, hey, this is how you build um, Viper if you want to scale into the late game. You know, you have to go for this Eye of Scotty, be, be more of your classic right clicker than to rely and play more around just your uh, laning prowess. I agree. I feel like uh, Limp and, and CCNC both do this because they're used to also playing like a... Like, because they play the hero so much, and in the case of Quinn, very often he's like a pseudo win condition for the team. They often play dual core with Yawar with some sort of fast carry, like Luna, for example, on Yawar. And so building scaling is important. I think this game skill will be useful against Raising against DKA. The only issue you really have is Lena, and even then the lane is not that bad. Once you max the Corrosive Skin, Later on in the game, you're going to be pretty A-OK -okay against her, even against the Ancient Apparition. And you have a good game where Tide can build pipe easily. Yep, you do. Absolutely here for Lois, who's not going to struggle too much into the skeletons. Um, but his uh, only kind of scary moment is going to be into this Wraith Fire Blast Cold Feet combo. Um, but again, we've got MSS here at level 1 already with the Fire Spirits that are going to slow these attacks coming through from Skitter and Fata alike to uh, make sure that Leslau can just continue playing the lane. Did not bad at all, 5-1 and one compared to the 7-6. and six. So Skitter definitely uh, getting his fair share of denies and more than his fair share, I would say. Radiant's bottom tower is under the attack. Noir is not having great results as 3-3 is managing to annoy him and cut the lanes pretty accordingly. And SVG unfortunately is not great help for this lane. I talked about how great Luna is the raid support thanks to the Lunar Blessing, but Nyx is not that support. I think no. they had to put the Phoenix top to deal with the Wraithing, I agree with that choice, but this did put the uh, Luna enough for carries. 
Quinn's got this water bottle, so although Nine has gotten a, a good amount of uh, harass in here with the Dragon Slaves, etc., um, he's not going to be able to too easily go for a kill here. Minute six is when I expect to see rotations from the supports here, as Nine and Quinn now going at it. Six, six stick charges, though, for Quinn are going to keep him nice and topped off, as now he's going to go ahead and start using a bit more of the region he has available to him. Quinn. Oh, oh Quinn. they're going again. Oh, he actually got to kill nine. Just going to poison to death. Look at that. Quinn taking a page out of the European monarch strat and just poisoning the death. No chance for her to come back into lane just yet. He's going to have to TP back. Bottle was completely expended as well. Huge win for Quinn because he should be able to secure runes now with this. Autumn, you are getting right clicked down by 33. LOA with a stun in four more seconds. They're not going to be able to get a kill out of this, but good harass damage here onto the Luna, who's now all out of regen after that last tango. Got a couple that LOA can at least share on over to her to get her topped up. They are sparring again over the mid lane rune. Rotations on the way from MSF. Quarter two, there's the Icarus dive in, but the kill's going to come first here in favor of nine. He'll in return split here by Quinn and MSS alike. Well played by Nine, right? Just acknowledge that they had to go and, and get the kill on Quinn there, because Quinn was being a bit too friendly with those, bot, those bolt water runes. Uh, they needed to rotate MSS maybe a bit sooner for that to be protected. But regardless, uh, it's it's a small win for Tundra just because of the fact that they get the experience out of that kill. He evens out of it what happened earlier. I think I still think Quinn is quite happy with how this lane. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, Lelis doesn't really mind this 1v1 with the Wraith King. I think he's a little bit more scared of the Wraith King when the AA is around and hovering in the lane. You can see now he's confident enough to just go ahead and skip the wave. So he'll pull the creep wave back on over. So that's that's a consequence of the rotation of the Phoenix. Snake King taking a bit of damage here, uh, but he's just going to be able to flutter and fly away on the Wyvern. Uh, really, really defensive build here on Snaking on the position for Wyvern, in, in terms of the items anyway. Magic Stick, Headdress, and the Infused Raindrops, all really just to be able to stick around as long as he can here. I'm gonna go again for Yawar. More promising this time around, but with the stun, they won't be able to quite find him. Another kill onto Quinn, though, in the mid lane. Fata and Lina this time working together for that one, and the triple tip out from Tundra to try and uh, press his nerves a bit. We'll see. As the 1k lead by Tundra is very different from the last game where Quincy Crew did dominate the lanes quite nicely. They haven't been able to do the same thing this time. Despite the good middle mid lane that they had, the Luna has been crushed a bit by this DK. Not the greatest support to combine this. And uh, Lelis going for a more aggressive build on the Anchor Smash. They allow him to be completely free, as I imagined. I thought maybe the Anchors, the Cracking Shell build was a bit better. But this build allows him to be a bit more aggressive. So Skitter has not been really denied whatsoever. No, he is not. LOA at least able to snag away the bottle refill rune here for nine, so that's going to force him all the way back home and, and free up a bit of space for Quinn, who picks up the power rune. Uh, illusion rune for him might let him push a little bit here. Even we'll get a D ward going. So they're going to fortify, and yeah, Quinn is probably going to pop this regen here just to tank the tower a bit more if needed. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's definitely a bit of a weakness here for Quincy Crew is that they don't have the best natural push. Um, you, you cut waves real nicely with this lineup for sure, uh, in between the Viper and the other green man, the Watermelon himself, Lelis, on um, the Tide Hunter. It's snaking, he's easily able to TP away. Uh, but but in, when it comes to actual tower damage, they, they do struggle. What on Quincy? Yeah, yeah, for, for direct tower damage, early on anyway, early on. Late game Luna, of course, is a, is a complete monster. Yeah, once you get the shard on Quinn, then no idea. But you're right, you're right. No. You, you don't have the, the push that DK can offer. Hell, even the skeletons on the base are pretty good at pushing, just casually. You're right. Dyer's so you kept control the map attack. in that way, you're trying to look for kills. Very similar to last game in that sense. Oh, well, well, well. And nine, it's just an easy kill here for Quincy. Yeah, They're gonna let him die to the poison. SVG still fighting, yeah, trying to find Fata. Fata, the poison is not gonna take him down enough, so they will have to settle for the kill in the mid laner, but that's all they needed. And now let us, that, since he's free against uh, the Wraith King, just completely fight him 1v1 and put him in a pickle. The Hood of Defiance is not going to die anytime soon. Fata is going to be scouted here. LOA's got the Impale. He's going to connect onto it. That'll trigger the Acorus dive. Level 3 Fire Spirits here. Fata, he's going to get the Cold Feet to prop, but after he dies at an earlier point in Mana Burn, I want to say, from LOA at level 4, is going to be used for the kill. Gitter, of course, saving onto that skill point after losing two of his own heroes in the jungle. It's not really too tempting of a, of a place to go, but no longer really enjoying this 1v1 matchup versus the Tidehunter. I wonder where he's going to end up going here. 
DD rune spawns Fata. top. Quinn's gonna pick it up. Yeah, not a chance. Fata was just glanced at the rune there for a second. In fact, Fata should know where Quinn is going. Avoid this trajectory completely. Dyer's top tower but it's a full attack. murder mode. Now taking the enemy stacks on top of that. He's gonna go for the boots of travel we talked about with Limp as well. Healing build, some degree. Because I, I honestly think that Viper can be really used for all throughout the game. There's never a point where Viper's gonna be. You have some really, really solid matchups, especially if you deny the lean out too. Yeah, for sure. Quinn's gonna cut that ward. A bit unfortunate for Fata. Cold Speed should proc here, so they are TPing some friends on oh. in to help get a kill. So no, actually, this will not proc. Apologies. 33 even. I think TP'd in, maybe thinking that something would happen there. Snaking as well was trying to rotate from behind, but LOA was gonna make that one impossible. I mean, it's, it's kind of... It's a little wild, isn't it? They're, we're already playing here on Quincy Crew as if we've taken both the top and the mid tier one tower, just so invasive in the enemy jungle, planting wards, getting now three kills in this jungle in the past three minutes, and it, both these towers are actually still alive. Nice burn. Feels like early on, though, this uh, support combo of the Ancient Apparition and the Wyvern, just without the ultimates, are unable to repel these invaders. Yeah, I agree. And this, this comes to. Oh, they, they're not even really able to get the counter kills needed, right? Like, you have some decent initiation and good save on these people. But as I was talking about, I, I see this from Tundra all the time. They don't really want to play these first damage heroes on taking, or they haven't least this whole tournament. They might need to consider it because this makes it so much more difficult for them to Radiance control. Middle Tower is under attack. Quincy Crew doesn't matter, they have map control around. They just go in wherever they please. 3-3. Oh, Look right. at that. Super Dumbass right in his face. Looking for the Viper Strike as well. And that Viper Strike should slow him down enough. The GG tree. Still gets stunned. 3-3 trying to deny the vision there, but not going to work out. Yep, LOA again. I mean, we haven't been able to even get this D ward Dyer's down as uh, Quincy putting that observer down well after. Nice uh, bit of spiked carapace gonna proc. It's only a level one carapace though. Very, very short stun. Uh, so he'll still end up dropping to the likes of Skitter. Fanta able to defend the top wave here. Uh, but Lelis already completing the Hooded Defiance is not going to be, yeah, too scared of anything. He's going to walk right up to Skitter, farm all the skeletons, and actually, because of course Anchor Smash's physical damage, uh, clear the golems as well. Well, this is, uh, again, playing an awesome game. It's it's surprising. I mean, three Viper picks in a row for Quincy Crew. They lost game one on it, won game two uh, with the Lelis Viper, but they flex it back on over to the mid lane here uh, in this game for Quinn to uh, allow Lelis instead to get a good matchup on this Tidehunter. Smoke play now coming through from Tundra as they'll gather around the Tier 2 tower. Look for some sort of play here. We are now having at least uh, the Winter's Curse available for snaking. Find MSS perhaps? Or well, he's just breaking the smoke in the end. He still has yeah. the spirits in the acres, I don't think he's gonna die here. Nah, Bunch of wasted totally time because he smoked with your carry. Because I mean you know that Lena has to recover and you know three things used to be pushing towers Dyer's because he smoked with your carry a bunch of wasted time. Dyer's Dyer's top tower more raid king. Fallen. And now Quincy Crew can take advantage of that by your watch sticking a tower by himself, continues to farm the safest lanes. You're swapping jungle sorta, of, but you haven't been able to take the tier one bottom nor the tier one mid, despite having a DK. So the swapping jungles is slightly dangerous, and Quincy Crew could Dyer's top this. tower is under attack. Well, then they go again. We, we've, like you've said, we've, we've yet to be able to to really apply too much tower pressure, despite having the DK over on the side of Tundra. Now into the jungle, uh, under the Dire jungle goes Quincy Crew. Kind of just again, really comfortable Radiant's to fight around here. Still smoked up, attack. holding on to Ravage. Well, it's in a good position here to catch anyone who's grouped up and, and trying to repel these invaders. But looks like Quincy now Radiant have eyes for this tier one tower. Going with BOTs. And actually with 33, perhaps now the target snaking though. Uh, but he's going to be uh, into the fog of war. Ice Blasting coming up on top as well. Good damage onto LOA. They'll be able to burst him at the very least and uh, simultaneously save 33 from a potential slow uh, but costly death. Dire structures are good kill on the tower here. Sorry, good kill on the on the next assassin. If they can take a tower as a result, it evens it out. But Tundra's already ready for to defend Quinn. This. Uh, and that's BOT's finish now for Arlena as she bots into this uh, tower to be able to defend it. Quinn, I think she's, he's in kill mode. Scale. He's trying to scale herself then, and trying to like saying, "I'm gonna die a bunch this game." BOT's will be almost like a minus for me, so that kind of works out. Fata in the top lane, Quinn. Just looking for this. Coming though. So that ice blast yeah, ice is blast not just for already. nothing. And, uh, and they hit him with cold feet. 
Gonna hit it with Lester Gray as well. Not useless the Laguna Blade. Quinn might just die there right before the Ice One ends, but as a result, Knight could be in trouble. It's only SVG, however, and that Cold Embrace will keep it nice and happy. Oh, He'll walk his way with the Happy Tree, which means that's gonna be two kills going the way of Tundra. He's only losing the Ancient Apparition, most importantly, killing Quinn there. Big, big deal. Yeah, they just really read that quite nicely. I think um, the rotations were, were, were fairly preemptive. They did at the time have a, an Observer Ward here, which scouted his initial movement on up. And uh, of course, with one hero showing in the lanes, who is a, a very juicy and tempting kill, they knew that they had the counterplay at the ready. So nice job there, just kind of... Um you know, getting into the mind of Quinn and, and killing the killer, so to speak. Uh, in the meantime, unfortunately, Lelis is not as lucky in the mid lane. He's, he's at least got an immense amount of farm here for an off laner. Pretty respectable amount. He's 700 oh, ahead of nine. 33. He has the Blink Dagger already. And trying to just cancel line every, wherever he goes. Quinn is mirroring his movement. He's misshapen. He's much safer. I mean, yeah, he got caught out there top. Okay, this happens. But mostly, you tried to mirror the Lingus Boop, canceling the farm. Idea. That way you don't have a space creator. Lean is always an easy kill for... Even without something like a clockwork, Nyx can just fulfill that. Is that word to block? It, it will block the camp, yeah. For the most part, um, a lot of the EU teams, Tundra included, but I've seen this both from Alliance and Secret, like having vision over this secret shop area. For the most part, the EU teams will ward like right in the middle, usually cutting down the tree as well to give the most vision. Uh, I haven't seen this one before from our EU teams. Oh, Fata. Oh, gosh. Reveal for Lelis. I kill him with the Vendetta there. Gosh, it's actually... Who's the SVG though? Will die. Actually, Winter's Curse. Curse has been used on Lelis. He still has the Ravage though, so you don't want to group up near him and Sunray will keep him healthy. I'm going to wait that you can counter the Curse, by the way. If you don't have the Supernova, which you did, but if you feel like you don't need to use a Supernova, you want to, you don't have it, you can just Sunray and pretty much keep Lelis alive. I don't think they want to use Ravage before Skitter loses his first life, but with a poison attack, Skitter is just going to die. Ravage is still available. There's a Supernova. Lelis is using the Ravage perfectly, zoning out the rest of the enemy team, and guaranteeing the kill on Skitter. Congratulations the crew. Yeah, but it's yeah. still worthwhile for the carry kill, honestly. You took the reincarnation level one, which is also a huge cooldown. You defend your towers, you took a tower as well. Oh yeah, I, I agree. It was just four ultimates, right? Quincy, they're not messing around. They've already got the tier one top. Yep. They've got the tier one middle. They're in no position, neither team, to be honest, are in any position to look for a Roshan fight. So yeah, why not use the ultimates? You, what are you going to use, Ravage for farming or Eclipse for farming? Absolutely not. Those are fighting abilities. And well, that's the best fight you could muster here until these come back off cooldown. I fully support the move. Say that, but then you watch Hector play Luna. <laughs> What else? It hits, it hits the heroes like four times, that's nothing. It hits creeps forever. Four hits is enough to kill any genius. Someone's writing that down. There's but honestly, taking notes here. You are, I think, this been doing a pretty good job. Nine. He's been hiding in the river, though. Yeah, he picked up the rune. LOA needs a little bit more He's for the dead. kill. And now he goes, takes down to the poison damage of Quinn. LOA on to die here, though. It looks like he's going to shatter the ice blast as the fire out from 33. will secure that one kill. These haphazard fights are very difficult. Like, his, his Lina is actually recovering nicely. That's the smart choice of the Boots of Travel and even the Yule Scepter. He's not gonna go for BKB. I'm presuming it'll be the physical damage to Lina as it flexes a bit later in the game. But it's just so difficult when the Viper can just run at you, Titaner can just run at you. Uh, the Luna honestly can do the same. Y you have nothing to survive that except for Light Strike Arraying them and hoping for them. Quinn is going to go next into the Sanj. Nearly has enough money for it already. It'll make him a, a touch more tankier, annoying to deal with. There's a nice blast that is going to be used. Looks like to scout Roshan, perhaps cut away, but it's going to be a bit late, so we're not going to release it. Uh, Yowar, unlike the Luna of Game 1 for Skitter, uh, does decide to go into the Mask of Bandits, but still deciding uh, that Dragon Lance into most likely the Mantis Styler or uh, is a worthwhile investment here for the Luna. Of course, uh, game one, I would say Skitter's decision to skip the Mask of Madness Radiant's and pick up the BKB earlier was potentially attack. a game-winning decision, as the Drow Ranger of Yuar just wasn't ready to fight. Here, of course, Yuar is just getting so much free Radiant farm, and he's going to be quite confident that so no matter uh, if he goes for the scaling build, he's, he's not going to be too pressured early on in the game. Nice blast by Will Scott Roshan. Can they fight this? I don't think so. 
Yeah, they, I don't think they want to item. They realize it's, it's not really worth it. The first stage is also not going to do as much. You just take a couple tier twos. Sundry, Sundry, that ice blast damage away. Yep. Is it going to be the only lock-in throw that I'm missing? No, it's pretty good. No, Jeff. Yeah, cool. Not uh, yet, anyway. Not yet. Speaking of Holy Locket, we already have one completed for Snake King. Next, doubling back into the Glimmer Cape. I believe it when it was it LOA who was playing the Winter Wyvern game number one, also, or game number two, deciding against the uh, the Holy Locket. The item instead going for the Glimmer Cape. Heading around through the trees, looking to try and find Snake King. The Snake King, a simple but effective Jukes, just give him a, a little bit of a run around. Some misconnections here uh, above where the t top tier one tower used to stand. SPG's like, he was never there, guys. Uh, he, he never there. I, I, I would have just found him. Well, Snake King laughing to himself. I like the Glimmer Cape build yet again this game. It does not like, it's not like Cold Embrace sets up for any massive amount of. I'm sure, you can burst someone down with Eclipse. Right, or, or you can get another Toxin and attack them, but it's not going to be game. Yeah. Especially because Quinn is going for more Dark of a physical. Are scanning. I would say the healing is, is definitely very worth it, because this time, compared to, I want to say, the last time we saw the Wyvern, um, it was like only Agi cores. whereas now we have the DK and the Wraith King, both of whom are going to benefit greatly from that additional percentage-based heal. Um, but you still set yourself up for like some problems, right? Like a free Anchor Dyer's Smash, which is going to be especially punishing to a hero with a crit. Fonta oh, trying to TP away. We're not going to use Ravage way. for this, though, so uh, they'll just let him leave. Yeah, it's not worth it. There's the huge advantage of a support right when you're playing five. You're like, well, fuck you. And if they do, then you all chat it. Oh, he's for me, lol. Yep, yep. That's that's the biggest. Uh, that, that's what really hurts. I'm gonna see a shard soon on Fata, so he'll have some more utility here. To push out lanes and everything. Right now, it's really just nice blast. He's a walking cold ice blast. As the Bantasol gets finished on the war, and as why I'm Viper, I'm expecting. Honestly, a smoke soon for for Quicksicker once you get these three items. He's been scouted. Oh, he's blinked away in the trees. I'm always gonna have to guess where he's at. And uh, unfortunately, he blinks into a pocket. Gotta know your trees here, Quicksicker. I'll be able to scout That's him a good out. Short blink. Short blink. I don't think you could get guessed that on Nyx either. At least not double fluffy hat build on probability. Get the issues of playing a five Nyx. We've almost got this uh, Radiance completed for Skitter, though. He's about a, a thousand gold away, just needs the recipe with the Relic already on the Courier, returning from its trip over on the Secret Trap. Quincy, though, they're going to go ahead and smoke up and potentially look for what could be a very damaging fight. Looking to reset the progress. Oh, they've scouted the Relic on the Courier here. Uh, it's up to LOA if he wants to try and decide Dyer's to break it here top. and go for the kill, but they're actually using the Courier as vision. Dyer's now Leslo is going to turn and kill it. They've got Ravage. They're holding onto it for now because it's just Skitter that they found underneath the Tier 2 tower. Snake King, though, his own Courier is going to snuff him out or, or or, or scout him out as well here. The ultimate courier betrayals. Ultimately, though, the, uh, the smoke is going to be fruitful or fruitless as they're not able to find anyone. Mata hiding in the trees. Has TP. Mata, hang out again. We'll LOA find them. Wait, hold on. Quinn? Lot. Is Quinn in trouble? Or is 3-3 three, three in trouble? Quinn has Aegis, dude. 3-3 three, three is in trouble. True. What's better, a walking dragon or a flying dragon? Clear. My poison. Quinn just destroys the DK. They can even catch someone else in the bottom lane. Nine. Oh no, oh, no. he's not getting away this time. No matter how much movement speed you have, nine's out of mana now. Yul's the illusion. That must feel bad. We have Lucent Beam in a second. Mask of Man is stopping in there. The Lucent Beam. And that will get be yet another kill on this poor lead. Yeah, I mean, not only did they get that kill, but they were still, you know, recovering, regrouping from the fight top. Uh, Quinn and Lelis were getting to kill mid lane, and they were so confident that they had the time to cancel that kill. Uh, and we even used Vendetta, or used the auto attack damage out from Vendetta, which has been sped up significantly, I should add. So it's, it's a lot easier and more secure to go for those types of plays. Uh, but they just they just knew they had these kills. I mean, Quincy Crew, with this first Aegis, yeah, you're right, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world here for Tundra, but the way Quincy are playing around it, the confidence that it's given them, to make these rotations around the map are just giving them such a, a big lead now here. Well, we're getting to the point where Tundra's going to start to be able to play this game just by Radiance, right? One, even though the Curry killed and that delayed it a bit, they're going to get that Radiance uh, soon enough, and then Tundra might be able to make a couple of plays. Like, Nine is still not under farm, despite the how much he's dying. The Boots travel really, really paying off. He's getting close to those BKB, to the BKB, sorry. That plus Radiance, I imagine you should be able to take a couple of fights. Yeah, it's dangerous against Ravage. 
not going to be the easiest of fights, and of course you have to wait out that ages, Dyer's but bottom it's tower certainly possible. Attack. Maybe you, instead of trying to force fights, you wait for the team to come at you, you Radiant's fight in your area, and then attack. as you progress, very confident in your Wraith team being a bit stronger than the Luna and the Lake game, if you can just get close to her, of course. That's, that's the big if, isn't it? Because we still have quite a few heroes you got to get through as Aegis is reclaimed there on Quinn. Uh, Lalas on the Tide Hunter with Blink and actually going back for the Pipe of Insights is going to help his team out quite a bit here because uh, this Radiance is about to be online. Uh, he's got the recipe delivered. There it is. Now he just needs the Relic. We're going to smoke immediately here from Tundra because they know that Aegis has been reclaimed. Again, difficult, but I think if they can get a jump here and now um, and start the fight off 5v4, it, it would behoove them greatly. Yeah, again, like I said, it's a bit dangerous against the... <laughs> He's like... What? There's so many creeps, guys. What am I supposed to just let them go? I'm a kid. <laughs> no, Skitter has to take those creeps, lose the smoke. Again, I yeah, feel like the smoke is a good idea if you get a pick up, but not a good idea if you want to force fight. Because Ravage is Quincy just in perfect position. Tundra, with, with respect, Austin. though, they know that Quincy crew are going to be waiting uh, right in perfect position. And, you know, you don't want to ever push up this double staircase, you know, because it's, it's two levels of terrain up. Uh, if you can avoid it, especially versus all the AoE that Quincy crew are having. Flashbacks, perhaps, to First Blood when they just five-man charged right up to the hill and, and all died for it. Patience here on this one here out from both sides. Second, Second smoke. smoke, trying to do the wraparound. This might just work Dyer's out. Bottom tower About to smoke like breaks. Oh, MSS, honestly. His positioning has been awesome here. Yep, they can't go in. Or maybe Tundra is going into a trap. We'll see. They stun SVG. Skitter. One of the lead, of course. There's the Ravage. And they take Skitter's first life. It's not going to be too difficult. He's probably stunned. Nice. Acting that BKB. As Skitter has been left on. Viper's just spinning onto him. There's still the Supernova. Sure, they lost the tide, but they get Skitter in return. Definitely a win for Quincy as they continue yeah. onwards, hoping for Fata. It's gonna be two easy kills going the way of Quincy's crew. It did, did end up being a trap, like I said, forcing the 5 on 5 against a Ravage. Maybe not the wise of choices. They had to do something, but I think that was a bit, uh, a bit hasty of a move. I, I agree. I, I could see like the calculations behind Dyer's that move, why they thought it was a good idea. Attack. They just ran out of Aegis, you know. We have Blink on DK, uh, who's really strong. We still have Winter's Curse to counter-initiate. This is a great place to fight around. We, we planted a ward, and they had picked up the DD rune there on Skitter. They just weren't really all on the same page, it felt sneaking. I'm not really sure where he was. Uh, he zoned out Dyer's a little bit too much, I think, by attack. that Ravage to be able to counter-initiate properly. And Quincy, for the most part, in that fight, they, they kind of just stood a a little bit south of where that Ravage was. They weren't going to be able to, they weren't going to set themselves up here uh, for Snakey to try and counter initiate there. So just good positioning from Quincy, good patience. And, and they knew that Tundra, you know, if they went up the first time, would have been overextending. And even with the DD room, they, they were just as overextended. Yep. They know what a team wants to do when they're behind. Like I said, they're always really good at guiding teams into the wrong place. Radiance bottom and tower uh, trapping is, is the name attack. of the game for them. They've been doing a really good job here. Like Tundra did get into attack. their power spike, you could say, but. The problem of getting into this power spike is that your movements become so obvious because you don't have enough map control to surprise an enemy team. Dyer's Even though I think the flank was a good idea, attack. that was a flank for a pickoff, not a flank for a 5 on 5. Yeah, and now that's a good way of putting that, it. Now that's as long a really as good gets way of that, that Aghanims is going to be very difficult for them to push these lands any further. Especially if Knight dies here. Yeah, he does not the BKB. BKB. Radiance oh, that's punishing though, because Roche is going to be up in 30 seconds, Abo. That's not amazing, and by then we're going to have all the team fought ultimates. 33 trying to TP away, but it's actually going to be Yawar who completes his TP and immediately stuns up the Dragon Knight who is trying to split push. Second hero dead for 44 seconds, Roche now back in 15. <laughs> all the ultimates up by then, and no BKB, no DK for the next 35, 40 seconds. Is there a way that you could kill type first in these fights or uh, ignore that Ravage? I don't know. The BKB is not going to come on, on time for Skitter. I think we need to commit a lot for it, though, is the problem, right? Like, I think we, we need to, one, keep him stunned, because we don't have any ways of silencing him this game. So it's got to be, like, an LSA into a Dragon Tail or, or, you know, some iteration of that into Ice Blast into Laguna. That's a lot of damage. And by then, what stops Quinn? What stops Yawar from then going, oh, you used everything to kill our Ravage. We still have Supernova and LOA, who's probably wrapping around to get a stun and, and kill you. Like, it's just, it feels so Dyer's difficult. Bottom tower is under attack. Right now, I mean, these Ravages have been amazing, not from Lelis, but I wouldn't say that's the reason they're winning these fights. It's, it's mostly just Quincy being in the right positions. 
That is true. But maybe if you force him on a fight like this one, this might be your opportunity. They go for fun. Another great Ravage, though. That's going to take away your chances like this snaking. There's the dust onto him. He's not able to glimmer cape himself to safety. 3-3 three, three won't die to this, so at least it's only the two supports. Unless 3-3. Three, three. Hey, there you go to the high rank of war. Like, just not afraid of this anymore. That was amazing. That was amazing. Quincy, you, you can see they, they play the fight very differently for when they know the Winter Wyvern's alive and could potentially turn and curse them compared to when the Wyvern's dead. They immediately all funnel together and they go up high ground. They, they almost hold hands and continue charging basically uh, after the DK. As soon as the buyback is there, they, they, they're not w even risking it. They're not wasting any time whatsoever. As, uh, they're just going to go ahead and grab the outpost and uh, abscond to safety here. Again, only use, utilizing the Ravage out from that. At the end of the day, only killing both supports but forcing a lot of reactions out from the likes of Tundra. Now it's all about the Roshan. The Ravage is not up, so there is a chance for Tundra here to take the Roshan. I mean, they can't go in for it first, but they could somehow punish it. This is now when you've tried to fly. I can take a 5 on 5. This would be a good idea here. This smoke would be a, um, a good option, but it's so difficult at the map control. You don't know where Quincy is. If they're in the triangle, they might still be able to win the fight, as you said, because their positioning is so solid. We're soon to have a Scotty on Quinn. I think the moves, the moves by Tundra are the best they can do, given their position, but Quincy's a really hard team to beat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They, they just really don't like making mistakes. And, and when they do, they always, it seems like, have a plan B, you know, for a second after they kind of got wiped last game, for example, only to then buy back on their three cores and then the game. You know, it, it, it feels so difficult. And now they're just going to go straight for Roshan. Ice Blast is at the ready, but there's just no way for them to contest it in time. Second Rosh ought to be going the way here towards Quincy for free. Well, it seemed like they were expecting this in Tundra when they were... <laughs> Shard, I'm probably given to Immortality. Viper. Luna. Yep, more damage for this Luna, who's now 6k ahead of the rating. Like, no matter how good the rating can be in the late game matchup, because Skitter has less map control, you just can't farm as efficiently as a Luna. In general, you don't farm as fast as Luna, even with Radiant. And... No matter what core-to-core -core matchup you had, that 6k lead puts you always, always ahead of rating. Do you even have good, yeah. good uh, high ground? Well, Another good. issue that Tundra are really having right now is Quinn's itemization is, is just really damn good. You know, it, much like Limps yesterday, it might even be the exact same build. I can't quite claim to remember Limps off the top of my head. But now they just got this Eye of Scotty completed. It, it allows Yawar to go for a little bit more of a luxury item being the Butterfly before going for the Scotty. Because we still have that great attack speed slow on him uh, to really punish the Lina, kite out the DK. In uh, comes the Ice Blast now. Yawar is going to go in and definitely dodge it, as will Quinn. What if I is through now? You aren't taking a, a fair amount of damage from the tower, but just needs to spend a little bit of time in the sun here. Feel the heat on one back up. Rotations on back. Les Lau. He's got Ags already, so that's got that AoE gush slowing 33 to a crawl. He's going to turn and hit him with a ranged dragon form stun. Les Lau, another blink in six more seconds. We'll chase him into the trees. What do you reckon? Is this worth a ravage here, Avo? I mean, yeah. Well, I'm sure. Go ahead. No. But I don't think the Ravage will be a guaranteed kill, so there's no point in it. I mean, well, with well, the Gush, well, uh... you can just completely... Like, that's why I like the Axe build. Brax does this as well when he was playing on... I mean, any, any team loves actually Axe first time on Tide. And it's just, you can push the lane so quickly, it's very difficult for Tonar to deep push this way. And for them to gain space that way. But now they know the Tide is bottom, so there might be a chance for Tonar to go in. Like, you can't get rid of the Ravage, just get rid of the Tide like this. Skitter. Okay, no, it's 3-3. Walking in for your walk. There's the Ice Blast on top of that. Force tap him out of the Ice Blast range. He's got the Ace, by the way. Winter Skirt comes to FPG, but those Glaives almost kill 3-3 and Skitter. They actually do murder. Skitter. They use the Golden Brain to save 3 3. He won't survive for now. Again, you are still in possession of the Aegis. We still have potential Ravage. There's the Aegis taken away. Use a fair amount of research for that Aegis. Super now just to protect your war so you can retreat. Not too bad a fight for Tundra, all things considered. Yeah. I would say pretty good. I mean, they, they lose yeah. the first life, they lose Reincarnation in exchange for Aegis, so now they're both even. Um, but th I think that was just the result of Lelis not being able to get back into the team fight fast enough Dyer's and Tundra capitalizing off of that. Um, we've seen last fight when Lelis is able to get a jump in off these Blink Ravage initiations, uh, and that was even before the Aghanim Scepter applying this huge Dyer's AoE of minus armor and Sandra move speed uh, that, of course, you are is going to absolutely love. Go to Cold Embrace there. Really, really well played by Snaking. Patient, super, super patient all game. I want to say that's the first Dyer's curse we've seen. Am I, am I correct in that? No, we I don't know. We've seen a couple before. Okay, so, okay. I'm completely wrong then. 
Oh, it was the first really good curse, uh, and it'll not have a kill uh, the here. First solid uh, curse, the first yeah, solid they, they have used it, I think, once or twice. Near the Roche, but everything. Okay. Radiant Oscar. Um, but I mean, maybe, yeah, we've seen three Winter Wyverns, so yeah. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Wyvern today. It's been uh, basically always picked up in, in some form. 33, nice little split push out from him. Once again, probably blinking into the trees, is able to escape. Tejas, though, I, reclaimed. The problem with a curse like that is when we saw the glaze. The cold feet had not triggered there on Luna. That was, oh, the course dead. In the middle of Winter's Curse, dude. That, that shouldn't happen, you know? That's the difficulty of using the curse on the Luna. Those glaze will keep on bouncing. You have to have really good positioning here on Tundra. You can't really re-engage in these fights. And there just seems to be getting worse and worse because you don't have a way to recover either. Despite how good your late game might or might not be, it seems like Lina might be your win condition now more than Wraith King because of her ease to get farmed thanks to the boots of travel and the big... Yeah, it's 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 not like uh, an Alina again. This is something that teams have really wisened up to, especially at this level of play. They're not going to let Nine just play all around the map looking to split push. They've got a Nyx Assassin here uh, to punish her if she were looking to do that, for example, and, and a, a couple of other heroes with BOTs to immediately follow up and get that kill. So it's, it's not like Nine could, you know, really be looking to play this game like a Puck or an Ember would, because it's not easy for him here on Alina. Exactly, yeah. You, you can get caught out relatively easily as well, despite your PKB. You you would even die to punch before, right? So, they're not gonna let you do this, but you're also the best candidate to do so. Who's, who else can do it? The Winter Wyvern some degree? Maybe the DK by sacrificing himself like he did last game? You, you, you really need Wyvern, though, in these fights for the counter initiation. It's just too strong of a spell versus two agi right clickers like the Luna uh, and the Viper. So, it's, uh, okay. it's, it's possible, but a difficult decision to make here. SVG. Okay, this is odd smoke. I don't think the smoke to retreat. Oh, they put a fire nation with the pale. Winter's curse this time curse. used, but not gonna help very much, honestly. That seems fine. The ravage, which will kill Fata unnecessary. 3-3 three, three will avoid it with a BKB. A really odd ravage as well by Quincy Crew. In the end, old Fata's the only death they have though. Okay. That's about the reaction here that Fata has. Yeah. Really, really odd spell usage, I would say, all around, to be honest. The Winter's Curse, when I thought we were going to have a little bit more damage, I think 33 wasn't quite expecting it from the way he was positioned. Um, it was only onto the Nyx Assassin uh, as well. So, yeah. And then the Sunray, of course, from outside, keeping healed. But they found nine. Oh, no. Quincy Crew just wrapping around, are able to end his life in a matter of seconds. Couldn't even get the BKB off if he had it available. Great find no, there, Alpha Mellow did the greedy TP there. He thought, oh, I'll go bottom, I'll push two lanes at once, I can get away with this, you cannot. <laughs> Not against Quincy, they're waiting for these kills, because, yeah, they can go high ground, of course, but until you have something to condition you to go high ground, you don't have an Aegis on top, why would you even try? Why would you not keep on pushing, killing enemy heroes, making sure they can't really farm too much, and play this as safe as possible? Quinn, on the prowl, well, no does way. not manage to land the attack in time, unfortunately. 33 oh, with another blink out. Creeps. Oh, right. This is the epitome of um, choking the enemy. Like, you don't even care where the lanes are pushed, you just want them to deny farm, so Quinn actually denied the creeps, though. You don't usually see this in stages, because you'd rather let lane be pushed for more vision. I think, uh, did we buy out? Yeah, it looks like we did buy out for this blink dagger now. So Skitter with a blink, able to reach the back lines a little bit easier, so a little longer duration BKB at seven seconds. Is not going to be too unhappy with that. Attack. KB duration here for 33, up to 8 seconds after his last engagement. Just waiting for the Lina to respawn here, and they may look to smoke yet again. Roche, Mine. fastest respawn possible in one minute from uh, exactly right now. I think both teams are probably just going to look to farm, but Quincy happy to do so when they've got the basically entirety of the map to continue farming away, and Tundra are just left with whatever scraps uh, trickle into the base. Tundra, going for another attempt here to to play around the board. Skitter sort of leading. They catch poor Snake behind. That's your Winter's Curse down. Ooh, no. buyback. It has buyback, it's true. But you still have Ravage, so can you buy back in Winter's Curse in time? Yeah, I didn't use much for that either at the end of the day. Simply just the Vendetta, but 100% useful for setting up for a kill onto the Winter Wyvern like that. Now the high ground defense begins. I wonder if you go illusions. here for the... Uh, Quinn still has no shot, by the way. I haven't really concerned himself for this. He's just really a carry. You are playing the super safe. There's no Aegis on him. Why would you give your advantage here? Just for a couple of measly racks. The illusions are already doing it. 
Dyer's top back. Honestly. Does nothing. Uh, the BK from Quinn saves him from attacking his. We have another Ravage. Yeah, you know, this has been triggered. He's perfectly fine, as you said. With the secondary Ravage next to the refresher, Fata might just die to the glaives. Okay, Fata. That's Elena okay. backs down. The, the, the good news is, is you can buy back on this Lena and still be impactful. You didn't at least pop BKB and then die immediately to the glaives, but it is not looking like a tempting situation. With little, very little choice, though, Nine is going to have to go for it. That will get Quincy away from the Tier 4 towers at the very least, but it's probably going to send him directly into the Roche pit. And again, Quincy still in a great position to fight thanks to the uh, mid-fight refresher on Tidehunter and checking in on what Roche has. It's just the Aghanim's blessing. Probably the luckier for... Uh, uh, luckier for, for Tundra is what I should say, because I don't think they lived through three Ravages this game. No, it, it's not going to I mean, I, they barely lived through one. It's not even that Ravage is that important, right? Lelis understands that you don't have to catch like a, a five-man Ravage. It's really just catching nine. And then you reduce the attack damage from Tundra so hard. There's an Axe now on this Roshan, which will be given probably to... I'm not really sure, actually. Do you give it to Yawar or just Yawar oh, the Dax himself? Oh, Skitter. Vision there okay, by Anasas. Nice Still holding on to the... Oh, no. Choke just like the first there. blood into the choke point. Now the Ravage to follow up. They've already nuked through 33 without buyback. The first life is taken, taken away from uh, Skitter as well. He's just going to BKB in an attempt to TP out. They lack the damage here. Long range Icarus dive out from MSS just to be able to scout 9 and slow him a touch. Les Lau now jumping forward again, looking to slow him as much as possible. But three stacks of Fiery Souls on top of the BOTs will be able to get 9 to save. Quincy Crew, I think this is time to finish the game. Tundra has maybe one more team fight left in them. It has to be a miracle Winter's Curse here by snaking. I think the Winter's Curse can only be used on Luna, really, at this point. Anything else? Oh, they even get a leveler. <laughs> Ice Frog is like, end the game. Just, just finish it for him. It's over. Looks like uh, Tundra, they've at least managed to find themselves a telescope, so that item here onto the Wyvern does give you a little bit easier. Uh, it, it, it makes the curses a bit easier. It has to be a miracle curse, man. I'm telling you, it has to be a miracle curse. Uh, just the, the perfect curse on the Luna, ideally murder, her at the beginning of the fight, hope that Ravage is not too impactful there, by acting the BKBs in time. Luna as well here with the uh, Aghanim Scepter Eclipse, can just put that one onto LOA. Um, one of the biggest differences it makes is that even if the Eclipsed unit dies, um, the Eclipse will not end as compared to the regular uh, on Aghanim Scepter uh, version of the ability. So you can really just send in one of your supports to go ham with it. Same thing here for the Phoenix. Icarus dive and uh, cast the Eclipse to uh, look to break into the high ground. Even glad for the mini stun this time. So last time we actually saw Skitter not going for the mini stun, someone for the life steals, the spike going for it. He's like, you know, might as well use the axe. It's pretty much promised on someone. Anyone on the enemy team, they won't be able to activate the AP. I think the lean is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Quincy might be tempted to wait the 30 seconds to have double uh, uh, double ulti ready to go here for Lelos on the Ravage. He's got it ready to go normally, just needs another 20 seconds. Uh, sorry, he's got the refresher ready to go, but he just needs another 20 seconds for the Ravage itself to come off of cooldown. Oh, double stun there. There's going to be the Eclipse. They've all immediately blown up nine. He doesn't have buyback. There's the first life gone already. And they're going to set up quickly new to the new skater on the second. Yawar up onto the high ground. He is going to be hit with the Winter's Curse here into the Ice Blast. The BKB keeping him at odds. And he's all going to lose his junior most of the damage. There's now the Ravage out from Lala's number one. Hit him with a second as well as they will crumble. GG is called by Fata. As Quincy will just storm into the base and take the series two to one. They're going to have the rematch versus T1 in the second round of the upper brackets.